If you've been thinking about buying one of our MTWs or drop-in kits, or already have one, you might be curious about some of the features of our electronics. So we're gonna take an in-depth look at the features and programming of the premium electronics on this episode of What The Tech. Before we get started, we get a lot of questions about tuning the dwell and felt like that deserved a whole video to itself that you can find that information linked down below. The premium electronics are top of the line offering and have tons of different settings for rate of fire, burst modes, and virtually unlimited customization options. These two setups might look a little different, but they're virtually the same. This is the control board for our MTWs, and this is the control board for our V2 kits. We're gonna go ahead and use the V2 control board for this part of the video, but we'll cover some of the distinct features about the MTW setup later on. So right out of the box, this is basically what your setup is gonna look like. You're gonna have your FCU, your wire harness, and your trigger board for whatever configuration of gun you're building. So to get it all set up, you'll take your five pin connector on the back side of the wiring harness here and plug that into the FCU. We'll take our control board and we'll snap it into the three pin connector on the wiring harness right here. And then finally, the two pin connector will just plug right into the back of the solenoid on your engine. The next thing that you'll need for your electronics is any generic 7.4 volt LiPo battery. So we'll just go ahead and plug that into the FCU. So if we go ahead and push the trigger switch, you'll hear this engine firing in semi-auto. And if we hold down the selector switch carefully, when we push in the trigger switch, now it's firing in full auto. So to get started to enter programming mode, we'll go ahead and hold down both of these little two buttons on the back here. You'll want to hold them down pretty firmly for about five seconds or until the lights light up like they just did. Now we're in programming mode. So you can see that the indicator here is green. So if we look at our chart, if it is green and the selector switch is in the top position, then we'll be programming 12. If we slide the switch to the bottom, then we can see that now we're programming burst if the light is still green, which it is. So this will be what we're wanting to do when the gun is set to semi-auto. Push both of these buttons down. And just like the chart tells us, if we have the red LED and the switch is in the bottom position, now we'll be firing our burst select modes. So let's take a look at some of the programming. So this will be what we're wanting to do when the gun is set to semi-auto. We can actually program this to different burst modes if we want. So if we set it to the bottom here, to number one, then we would be in semi-auto when we switch the selector switch to semi. But if we wanted to set it up a few, maybe we want to be in five round burst. So now when you pull the trigger, if your selector switch was set to semi-auto, you would actually be in five round burst. So we'll push down both buttons for just a second there. So this would be, what is the gun gonna do if you have it in full auto? So currently it's set to setting number six, which just like our chart tells us here, would be full auto, which is probably what most people are gonna want. But just like you could with the semi-auto settings, you can cycle this LED through the whole list here and set it to whatever you want. So maybe if you wanted to, you could have this on three round burst and you could set semi-auto to semi, so you could have semi three round burst. If you wanted to switch back, you could set your semi to three round burst and this one to five round burst or whatever you want. So the options there are pretty unlimited. In the top position of the switch with the red LED on, we should now be in rate of fire. So if we pull our trigger and full auto, You can hear how fast that is. And it basically, if I keep pushing this button, it will slowly add to the stack of LEDs here on the side. And now if I hold down the trigger, you can hear how much faster it's firing now. If you want a more in-depth look at what each of these values is exactly, we'll link the owner's manual down below where you can find some pretty comprehensive guides to the exact meaning of each LED on the board. So now that we have our settings where we like them and you hopefully understand how to walk through all the programming modes, let's take a look at how to save our settings. So once we have everything where we like it, there's two ways to save all your settings. The first and easiest way is just gonna be to take your battery, carefully unplug it, plug it back in and you'll be good to go. 
leave our board like this and if we don't mess with it for about a minute it will just power everything down and save the settings and you'll be ready to go. So let's take a quick look at the Forge series trigger board here. It's important to note that while it may look very different from the V2 one that we just talked about, they function in a very similar way and will have the same features mostly. Except this one has these two switches on the front here as the MTW has empty mag detection. So if you're running an MTW spec mag and you run out of BBs, it'll activate this switch here on the front and that'll stop your gun from firing just like it would if you ran out of bullets on a real steel AR-15. This is your bolt release switch. So basically after you reload a new mag, you'll just hit your bolt release. It'll activate that switch like that and reset the board so you can continue firing. One other thing you may have noticed is that there are no wires coming out of this board for the solenoid like there was on the other wiring harness um, but that's because there's these two springs here on the top that will simply contact the two screws on the contact yoke of your MTW and make the connection to your solenoid. I hope you found this video helpful. And if you want even deeper look at some of this, we're gonna link the owner's manuals down below where you can find some very specific information there about the different dwell settings and the values and some of that if you wanna check that out. Thanks for watching guys and we'll see you out on the field.